Hey, how's it going? This is Patrick with Public Company Community, and today we're going to have a very hands-on approach on how to build out the budget files for both a publicly traded company and for a privately held company. One thing that you're going to want to do is go out to the course documents and download the Excel files so that you can follow along as we go. And then the other thing, if I'm going too fast, feel free to just pause the video and you can catch up on your end. So with that said, let's go ahead and get started. So the very first thing that we're going to do is we're going to get started with the department expense files. Here's what's out on the course documents for the department expense files. Now these sheets are structured in a way that there's a roll up file that's the first tab here and that feeds from each of these other tabs and you can see we have the major expense categories for example payroll office costs unallocated costs and utilities is what's in for this sample company file and then for each one of those major categories I've got its own tab so for example payroll and office costs has its own now these are just simple equal Excel formulas that I feed in for example this one feeds in from the payroll and you can see it's just feeding in from the total payroll there. Now you'll see for these files what I've got is I've got three years projecting out into the future. Now I like to project out three years so that we can determine the cash runway for the company. Uh, however, when I go to actually get the budget approved, typically it makes sense to just get the one year forward approved and then this is just used for any financial modeling that we need to do for out periods. Now you're going to want to review this file in great detail and make sure it's exactly the way that you want it and make sure the columns are all frozen the way you want them, make sure the totals are working correctly and so everything looks good. So now that we're totally loving our file it's time to make some copies of it. Now we're going to need to make a copy of it for every single department. Now as we look at our class list, which classes is what QuickBooks calls departments, we can see that we've got four departments, design, landscaping, maintenance, and overhead. That's going to make it really easy. There's only four. Most of you are probably working with a lot more than four departments, especially if you're at a public company. Now this process still works if you have a lot of departments. I've done this with 60 plus departments. Granted it starts to get less and less fun as you get more departments in there, but it's, it's doable. It's definitely doable. Alright, so now we're going to make a copy for each department. Literally just take those. and rename each one. My next step, which is absolutely critical to the budgeting process, do not skip this step, is that I populate each row with the actual vendors that are used for those particular accounts or with the employees that are in those departments. So since based on the budgeting timeline that we'll talk about later on, we'll be preparing these templates in September, we need to look at all the transactions by department, by general ledger account, and by vendor through either August or through September. So let's look at how to actually get that information out of QuickBooks. So the very first thing that I do is I run a P&L. Now let's assume that we're doing these budgets for 2022 and so right now 
we're putting together the templates. It's September of 2021. So we want to run the detail for the first, let's say, eight months because September has not yet closed. So first, run the P&L for that period. All right, there's the P&L. Then I go down to the total expense line, which is right there. Double click it. And then this gives me the full GL detail. Now there's some columns in here that I don't like and I want the amounts to be in one column. So let's customize it. And to do that, go down here, get rid of clear, get rid of split, and get rid of debit credit, add amount, get rid of balance. There we go. And then we're going to export it. Create a new worksheet, export. Now, sometimes this takes a little while and if you're at a publicly traded company, So I went ahead and saved that sheet as GL Detail 83121. And so let's get started editing this thing. First, we've got this ugly split there. So let's get rid of the split. Then we, what we need to do is we need to get this account number on every single transaction. And so to do that, it's a little tricky. Um, first thing that we wanna do, and let's throw a split in here freeze pane I should say and we want to see where all of those account numbers lie it looks like they lie in column B for the most part a couple that are in D here some of these sub accounts let's see so the sub accounts for this what we're going to need to do first is we're going to need to get all of those accounts into the same column and to do that let's get them into column A and one thing that's funky with QuickBooks export files is that it doesn't format things as numbers so let's go ahead and make it a number first otherwise it won't work properly so to do that we're gonna just combine everything we say that equals that and equals that and equals that that way all of those account numbers will be in the same column. All right, there we go. And then let's just go ahead and paste values over top of that. All right, next we need this to copy down. So I have found a really cool way to do this. So highlight your meat there add filters and then you say equal the one right above it or plus the same as equal and then I go here and pick the blanks while I've got while I have this copied to my clipboard right I control C it and copied it go down here pick just the blanks and there we go so now you'll see it's put the correct account number on each one let's paste values over top of all of that now we're lucky in this file that the department here is coming across correctly Oftentimes, you're going to have departments and sub-departments and the structure is going to be a little off. You might have some work that you need to do in this column. Maybe you need to text a column it. Uh, typically, QuickBooks will separate primary departments and sub-departments with a colon like that. And so you might have to go to the text to columns feature and go to delimited, go to next, other, put whatever separating factor is in your file and then it will split 
the, the split it into multiple columns. You'll need to make sure you have enough spare columns in between here so it doesn't overwrite the amount there. Uh, but for us, we're lucky we don't have to deal with that. So really, the next thing that we want to do is get rid of all these totals. So we've got this kind of subheading here for payroll expense, and then it's going to total it here and then it put a grand total at the bottom we're gonna get rid of all those so really one way to think about this is that every QuickBooks transaction has a date no matter what that if it's a tran if it's the actual transaction row it's going to have a date so let's just filter on that and we're gonna keep everything except the blanks the blanks are going to be all those extra totals and things that we don't need oh that didn't work get just the blanks because we're going to delete them so there we go so there's all the totals you can see none of those are actual transactions they're just totals and subtotals and grand totals so we select them and I know you might be a little worried hey we're gonna delete this is it gonna delete everything in between like you can see we're only seeing row 2 and then it skips to row 326 it is not going to delete let's say rows 3 through 325 just the way Excel's set up when you've got this filter set on and you hit delete here. So we're going to right click anywhere on the blue there and then just say delete row and bam those are gone. But now you'll see when we clear the filter we've still got all of our detail. So that's really how you get this file set up to get just the, the heart of it. Now we're going to set up a pivot. So to do a pivot you have to have an account title or account uh, header title on every single column. So we're going to say account. This one, when I don't, when it's just a gutter column, I just put an X in there. I don't need it. But it, for, to do a pivot, it has to have something in there. Okay. So then we select all the information there. So to do that little quick move I just did, I hold shift arrows use my right arrow and then I hold control down and while I'm holding shift and it selects just everything so let me go to insert pivot table uh, yeah there and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna say class which is your department and then we're gonna go by account number and then we're gonna go by name and then we're going to total it by amount and then the date is going to go here in the column we don't want to see every single date and I don't know why quick why Excel does this but that shouldn't be count it should be some it, for some reason defaults to that and then for the dates we're going to right click here we're going to say group and then months and years this should only be one year involved and then scroll down here we're gonna go to the comma thing here. Right, right. We don't need the decimals. And there's our file. This is gonna be the one that we're going to use to populate our Excel file. So I have two monitors, but here I've gotta squeeze it all onto one. Um, what you can see here is you've got Jenny Miller add position, we'll just put her in there. Um, VP design, we'll call her. And annual salary appears to be 705 times 12, something like that. And then I'll go through and populate each one of these fields here for payroll. Office cost, Looks like design has almost no office cost. Um, let's look at a more complicated. So I've switched over to the landscaping department here. And here we can see we've got fuel. So fuel, let's find fuel in our accounts. So it's account 6210. There it is. And it looks like it's trending Okay, it's about $106 a month, um, but we're just going to paste in that vendor. And then um, payroll expense, again, we'll populate this. 
and build this out a little bit more accurately. Uh, typically, I'll build this out based on the latest payroll run. For example, if you're paid twice a month, I'll take whatever number, whatever the gross pay was for Duncan Fisher and multiply it by 24. And then I'll also match up anything else, benefits, things like that. And typically, companies will have separate accounts. They won't dump all payroll costs into one account. But that this again, this is just a sample QuickBook file. And so then delivery fees look like they're pretty minimal, but um, we're going to throw them on there. So delivery fee there. So you can kind of get the picture here. We go through every single department and paste in the vendors for every single general ledger account. And I know, I know, sounds like a lot of work. And it is a lot of work, but trust me, it is so worth it. When we get to the process of actually reviewing these budgets and cutting out the fat from the budgets, we need to know which vendors we're cutting. And it also helps tremendously when we're doing our monthly budget to actual analysis later on after the budget's all finalized. And we'll talk about that a little bit later, but it becomes absolutely critical that we know exactly what we budgeted for instead of just high level miscellaneous vendors or other costs, things like that. There are very few spots where that's okay to put in there. Most of the time, you really need to have people budget by vendor. It ends up helping tremendously. So now that we've got these beautiful budget sheets with all the vendor names, everything rolls up perfectly, what we're going to do is we're going to send it out to the various department heads that are in charge of signing the invoices for the departments. So that's the key thing when you get to building these budgets, it starts getting confusing about which department things need to get charged to, where you need to budget for specific items. And the rule of thumb that at least should be the general rule is that whoever's going to be signing the invoice when the actual invoice comes in, whoever's managing that relationship with the vendor, that's it should go to that person's department. Now there you can have certain exceptions, but that's just at least the general rule. So we'll send out these budget sheets to the department heads. Typically it's a VP level, uh, who, whatever level it ends up being at your organization. And we'll send it out to each of those individuals. And then those department heads will be responsible for completing the sheets and returning them to you, the budget manager. So let's switch gears for a second. And let's talk about building that budget roll-up file. So this is going to be where we keep all of the, where we summarize all of the departments. And there's this file that's out on the course documents called Consolidated Budget Roll-Up. And this is the file that I use to summarize all of the various departments. And again, even though this is based on a small sample company file, these templates can be expanded and used for huge publicly traded companies. I mean, the concepts are exactly the same. You'll just need to add tabs for things like stock-based comp, company bonus payout, and other assets and liabilities that you can predict to have significant changes in the future. Those types of things are going to impact your cash flow projections. And also, if you're actually following along on your end and doing this for your company, you're going to need to pause the video intermittently to catch up. I mean, this is not a process that takes exactly one hour. This process takes days. So as you'll need to customize every provided template to fit your company's departments and general structure, uh, it, it does take a while. So the way that I get all of the data to roll in for budget sheets like this is I like to do lookups. So first, we're going to name and you would want to name each of the columns, but we'll just name the one that we're going to be working with. And then we'll go to the lookup function, which is there, the lookup. So I want to look up that in, and I've got our budget file over here, and I'm on the department expense rollup tab. And we'll go ahead and set our information there. 
and then while we've got it open over here let's go ahead and count how many columns so this is one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve December's 13 14 and the totals in 15 so we're gonna pull 15 and then this is always false I don't know why just cuz and yeah there's nothing there but it worked so for example if we put payroll here it flows right in it flows to our department expense of course and it flows into there so I go ahead and do that for each of the accounts set this lookup file for each of those and then I'll add in each of the departments that we've got and do the same thing set up the lookup files and then do the same thing for each of the years so the first column that we pulled was 15 if you remember it's column 15 in the lookup so we'll set the the table range for 2023 let's just go ahead and do it look up and let's go ahead and pull it all doesn't matter and so oops look up value is this then we look in that table that we selected and then the column index we're gonna while we have the formula open we're just gonna guess it but then we'll go back and check it so it was, I think it's probably around 27 and, false. and then let's see here what column really was it so no, this was 15 16 17 18 19 20 21 22 23 24 30 so that should have been 30. And then I'll go ahead and paste that down for each of these. Paste it on there. Get rid of the underline, add the underline, so on and so forth. So we will paste that across into there. And then what you can also do is paste this if you freeze this lookup value here. So we want to keep it in A. You can paste it across, but of course we've got the wrong department here, landscaping expense. What you can do is highlight that landscaping so you know you got it exactly right. Do a control F and do the replace. And then instead of it saying landscaping, we want it to say maintenance let's say and place all and you can do that for each of the departments that you have for all the different columns that you've got and this is where it starts to get very important that this department expense rollup file is identical for every one of your departments so we started with the exact same thing and then you need to not edit this this file right here this tab of this file right here because if you start adding columns in then no longer is the total going to be let's say column 15 or column 30 on every single file if you start adding rows in you're going to have missing accounts or extra accounts so you really just need to keep it the same after you're happy with it when you set it up initially before you even copy it over to be the same file for every department. Now in the roll up to there are certain things that you're going to need to do out by month as well which is fine we budgeted everything by month so we can get the information by month and what we do is we'll add a lookup to pull in the expense from each department for each month um, and it, it's best to not make it just a regular link you need it to be an actual lookup so that's why we've got the account number copied down here and then we'll set a lookup saying this being our lookup value and then we'll look into each um, depart each department's department expense rollup file 
and we'll pull depreciation expense. Uh, this sample company file doesn't happen to have that, but we'll pull it and then have it for each individual month and for each department. And then also each department, you, for to be able to do monthly cash flow projections, you're going to need to figure out the monthly costs. And so this can just be total, and you can see it's total expense, which is flowing from this here. So you'll do a lookup for each department for each month, and you'll have a total expense pull in for each department for each month going forward. And then the balance sheet, this is definitely challenging to get the balance sheet set up and get it to actually balance, uh, but it, it's doable, it's definitely doable. So you start with your accrual income that's going to come from these main tabs here. Uh, it'll come straight from your monthly expense, would be the total over here. And then you'll have a depreciation add back, right? You add back depreciation. If you have stock-based comp, which if you're a public company, you likely do. If you're not, then you can disregard. Then you've got other add backs. You're just going to have several other things. CapEx, you're going to add back other stuff that you want to adjust for manually. And then that's going to leave you with your increase or decrease in cash. And then what you want to do is you want this to be the, you enter your ending cash at 1231 or you projected to be ending cash at the, the last day of the year before you're, you're forecasting for or before you're budgeting for. Enter it down here and really you enter your whole balance sheet down here. Cash, other working capital accounts, PP&E, and of course it needs to balance out to zero. And then what this will do is it's going to take that increase decrease in cash and just flow it forward for each month. And for your depreciation expense PP&E, you can see here it's, it's calculating the depreciation. So it's subtracting from net book value any depreciation expense, and it's adding to net book value any capex. That'll make it so that that balances out um, total assets. Anything else that's going in these other columns, they need to be appropriately adjusted for in the balance sheet side as well. I like to also have a balance sheet summary. So it's just summarizing each of the years. And this again is out on the course documents. And, and then the other cool thing that I think I highly recommend you to do is put, because the budget needs to get approved by the board, oftentimes the budget is provided to the board in PowerPoint format and it needs to be prettied up, right? You wouldn't just email this crap to your board. I mean, they don't want to see this. They want to see a nicely summarized, well formatted file, right? And so it's going to be typically in a PowerPoint presentation that they're going to see it. You might have board members that really want to dive in and see the formulas, which is fine. You'll have to accommodate that. But typically you're not going to want them to, you're not going to want to overwhelm them with all of these formulas in this file here. But so here's some good board slides that you can do. Uh, sales and gross margin by month, by department or by class. Cash burn and then ending balance for each month. P&L with your internal account categories. So like sales, cost of goods sold, payroll, office costs. So total P&L, but then by those major GL account categories. And then also P&L by department. So you could have some of those major categories, but then put the departments on the top. Or you just say total spend by department and don't even call out the different categories. And then P&L by major lines on the SEC filings. This one's not quite as easy to analyze if someone's looking at it, but it's good to see. So if you're, um, you would just have sales, cost of goods sold, selling, G&A, other non-operating, just those main lines, again, that's typically not how management purely analyzes the individual pieces. There's just too much rolling into those major lines for management to be, be able to really affect change based on just those major lines. Typically, companies will look at more 
more detailed account groupings than just those major SEC reporting ones. And then CapEx by department, and then any major additions you want to call out, make sure that they're highlighted. And then current headcount by department. And then again, it's great to have tabs in this file, right in this file, for each one of those tables that are going to go in the PowerPoint presentation. And that way you can just copy and paste right over from your this Excel file into your PowerPoint presentation. Now when you're going to copy and paste something over into your PowerPoint presentation, one of the things that you want to do is go to view, get rid of these grid lines. And in this case you want to get rid of that freeze pane. And so if you were going to be copying and pasting this one in there, just copy. And then what I do when I get into my PowerPoint presentation, instead of actually pasting it, see it puts this ugly thing in there, I'll right click and paste it as a picture. And then that way, that way you've got the actual image and then any formatting that came over from Excel, it's going to look exactly like you saw it in Excel. You don't have to worry about because the, the actual numbers don't need to be readable in the PowerPoint presentation. It's just the image that needs to come across properly. Now the next thing I want to talk about is maintaining the different versions of your budget. What will typically happen is that you'll want to set kind of milestones as you go along and then you can track what has happened and what has changed since a certain milestone. Uh, typically I mark them as rounds and so what we do is we'll I'll typically maintain all the different files and put them into a particular folder round and roll up so we'll say that we've gone through talked to all the department heads and now we have our first round our first pass of the budget we want to, for whatever reason, create a new round. So copy and paste it. Round two. Now we've got all of these files in here. And we can check to make sure that all of our lookups are still working correctly. So go to that consolidated budget rollup. I'm sure. So update it, yeah, that's good. That's a good message, actually. And we can look at this number and let's look at the formula. Yep, round two. We can see that it's pulling from round two now instead of from the round one file. So now to earn CPE for doing this course, we have to go through review questions. Let's start off with the first review question. So this is a fill in the blank. When setting up the department expense files, it's important to A, customize all total formulas for each department, B, enter in estimated budgeting amounts for each of the department heads so that they don't need to prepare their own budgets, C, add the known vendors for each general ledger account by department, and then D, have the legal team review the templates first. So why don't you all think of the right answer and let's go through it. So the right answer is C, add the known vendors for each general ledger account by department. Now this is the critical step that we walked through. This is going to allow you to evaluate specifically what's being budgeted for and it's going to facilitate the budget to actual analysis that we do later on in the year. And let's go through some of these incorrect answers. So customize all total formulas for each department. Um, you don't want to customize the total formulas, especially on individual department roll-up tabs, or else the VLOOKUPs aren't going to work properly. So B was enter in estimated budget amounts for each of the department heads. You really don't want to do this. You want the department heads to own their own budgets, and for them to own their own budgets, they need to be the ones putting the numbers into the budgets. And then D was have the legal team review the templates first. There's generally no requirement for the legal team to review budget templates before they go out. So let's go on to question two. 
Which of the following below files would be the most beneficial for populating vendor information in the budget files? So A, general ledger detail, pivoted by department, then by general ledger account, then by vendor. So B, open purchase orders by vendor. C, last year's balance sheet. Or D, statement of stockholders' equity, shareholders' equity. All right, why don't you take a second? A, general ledger detail pivoted by department, then by GL, then by vendor. Now this is that specific file that we went through on how to create for the purpose of populating the budget templates with the vendor information. Also, so open purchase orders by vendor, that's generally pretty irrelevant to the budgeting process and is not generally used for the budgeting process. Last year's balance sheet, now this is used when we're putting together the cash flow projections, but it's not used when we're populating the different departmental expense files. And then statement of shareholders equity, generally not relevant to the budgeting process. So let's look at question three. When preparing the consolidated roll-up file, which Excel function do you use to pull in totals from departmental expense files? So do you use the simple equal function? Do you use the sum if function? Do you use just the multiplication function? Or do you use the VLOOKUP function? So I'll give you all a second to think about that one. And let's see. So D, the answer is D. So we use that VLOOKUP function uh, as a way to pull in the correct numbers, even if the rows are added or deleted from our source file there, the VLOOKUP function is still going to work properly. Now, A, the simple equal function, that's the converse answer because the, the formulas won't work properly if we add or delete rows from the source file. Sum if function is just not very relevant here, and C, multiplication function is also not really relevant to the, this particular question. So let's look at number four. When preparing the budget for your company, so A, it is against Sarbanes-Oxley rules to use Excel. B, the external auditors must approve the budget before it can be considered final. C, it is important to enter costs by vendor whenever possible. Or D, costs that are less than the company's materiality level should be excluded from the detailed budget files. Why don't you think about that? All right, so the answer is C. As we discussed, it's absolutely critical to enter costs by vendor whenever possible. So let's look at A. Sarbanes-Oxley rules do not discuss what software to use for budgeting. The external auditors very rarely need to actually approve the budget before it goes final. And then the company would be missing a significant amount of information if they only budgeted for significantly material items really need to go on a line by line basis and be as detailed as possible there isn't a lot of materiality that you need to consider when just deciding which costs to include and which ones not to you want to try to include all costs big or small and then let's look at the final review question which of the following is true regarding which department costs should be posted to so A, cost should be budgeted in the most logical department based on the department head's preference. B, cost should be budgeted in the department that is headed by the individual that will be signing the invoices and managing that specific vendor. C, by default, cost should just go to the corporate department with a few exceptions. Or D, most companies don't separate their costs into departments in the first place. So I'll give you all a second to think about that and B the answer is B so cost should be budgeted in the department that's headed by the individual that's going to be signing the invoice or managing that specific vendor so cost should be budgeted so a so a goes through cost should be budgeted in the most logical department that's not necessarily true uh, preferences of department heads are not going to drive this decision and then by default, cost should go to corporate. That's almost never the case. You don't want that to be a general rule. And then most companies don't separate costs into departments. Most companies that are actually doing a budget are going to separate costs by department. All right, so in this course, we talked about building out the departmental expense files. 
and then we talked about the consolidated rollup file that pulls in all that data from those departments and puts it into one spot. And lastly, we talked about managing the different versions, for example, round one or round two of your files. I hope you found it really beneficial. And one thing that I wanted to mention to everybody is that you actually can earn free CPE for authoring an article or for teaching an online webinar. It's actually really, really easy to do. I'll help you through the entire process. We can talk about some topics that you might be interested in writing about and it looks awesome on a resume. And again, you get totally free CPE for doing it. Strongly encourage you to do that. And with that said, to earn CPE credit for this course, you need to take the assessment that's on the course website. So with that, catch me on the next course.